Hey, good afternoon, everybody, or good evening. All right, so I've had a few different questions that I needed to ask myself as far as on uh, meters and coaxes and things like that. So I um, was kind of interested as far as in uh, some of the different things that I've come across. And over the years, I've bought several different meters just trying to find, you know, something to get, uh, you know, more accuracy as well as to do more functions, um, you know, versus using the old uh, uh, calculator and uh, good old fashioned piece of paper. So what I did was I sat down and I actually made out three coaxes, actually four. And I figured what we'd do today is I was gonna spend a little bit of time with you guys as far as, cause uh, it's something that I've had lots of questions about and everybody uh, is wondering, you know, well, what's the best way? What's this? What's that? Uh, trying to come up with, you know, the grand solution. Um, let's start with saying, you know, all three of these meters will get you where you're going. You know, what I've got here on the workbench today that we're going to be talking about uh, is the KC 901 S Plus, uh, the MFJ 259 C, and the Rig Expert uh, AA 55 Zoom. So these are the three meters that basically we're going to use and uh, battle against each other, uh, mainly just to kind of find out, you know, how accurate each one is versus uh, essentially the mathematical formula. So, you know, let's start out with, you know, with that. Uh, I'm going to set these meters off to the side, and we're going to actually get a piece of paper and uh, a writing stick. So I've got each one of these already pre-marked. As far as where I've got uh, one of them is uh, completely tuned. I think two of the three are completely tuned. The other one is almost right there. Um, then I've got a fourth one that once we actually go back through and we'll take some readings and some measurements, um, basically what we're going to do is go back and look at a as close to a validation as we can get, uh, which is using the mathematical formula on configuring this. Uh, so everything we've got here is going to be silver te is our uh, silver Teflon uh, connectors. As far as all our PL59s are silver Teflon. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to go into as well. Turn this down so it's not so loud. Okay. I don't want to shut it completely off. But anyhow. Well, hello, three. You'll go, you'll go for the MFJ for the win. Well, the MFJ is a very good meter. Um, you know, I definitely don't want to take anything away from that. Uh, I don't want to take away from any of the three of them. Uh, part of it, and you know, I, I know part of why you said the MFJ, and the reason has to be for one major reason, and that's the fact that it's been around for like 25 years. Um, so it's been, you know, it's been a meter that's, like I said, you know, essentially stood the test of time for what it is, and it's given given us a lot of information over the years. Um, you know, now there's two other main components that's actually going to be to this. Um, you know, we've got a half wavelength. Uh, there's also what we call a quarter wavelength. Now, a quarter wavelength, you actually have to tune it a bit differently than what you do uh, a half wavelength. And, you know, I actually wasted uh, a very large amount of coax because of the fact that I forgot one major step, um, you know, in figuring something uh, to a half wavelength. So that's another thing that I wanted to actually uh, touch base on as well. Um, so that way things don't get confusing. Okay, now then, we already talked about the fact that, you know, all of our connectors are silver Teflon. We're using our coaxes. It's RG400. Okay, we're also going to be using a T connector for this. And now this is nickel plated, uh, mainly because I don't have one. And then, let's see here. Okay, well, Scott, if you're watching, um, I am currently live. So uh, I'll get with your question here in a little bit. 
19.7 inches. I don't know where you came up with that measurement. But anyways, uh, the other thing that's really, really important is a small dummy load. Uh, granted, if you've got uh, a paint can dummy load, if you've got, uh, you know, I'm kind of fortunate in the fact that I've got a, a 5,000 watt bird dummy load that is at the end of the other end of the workbench that I use uh, for a lot of things. However, it's not really something you're going to set up here on the uh, workbench and use. So a small little 25, 35 watt dummy load is perfect for this one. Uh, this one is one that I've had for many years and it's one that uh, a friend of mine got me started on uh, and I'm actually very inclined to stay with uh, because of the accuracy and how good they have been. This one is actually made by Telaway. Uh, this is going to be model TWL35. So this is what we're going to use on every single coax that we're actually going to be doing. Okay, now for starters, we're actually going to go ahead and I've got uh, some stuff that I printed off the internet, all right, uh, which is velocity factors. Uh, this one here, I've used this paper, uh, well, the date on it says uh, October 30th, 2011. So this has been in my permanent notebook that long. Uh, another one that I've got that doesn't have my uh, uh, timestamp on it from how old it is. Uh, this one's just a few years old, and I've got some basic information as far as written off to the side. Um, there was one particular coax that wasn't on the back side that is on this one, and you know, it just comes from a different uh, different website, but it gives me a lot of good information. Uh, copyright on this one's 1996 to 2015, so. That's probably about when I printed this one off was somewhere around 2015. All right, so unfortunately, the LMR 400, or excuse me, the RG 400 is not listed here. Uh, the closest we have, uh, which is going to have a different uh, velocity factor, which is the LMR 400, uh, you know, which has a velocity factor of 85. That is not what we've got here. So. Uh, this is one of the ones we're going to go back to, which is the RG400, and the velocity factor that we've got here uh, is 0.695 for the uh, standard, and I, I do say that as a standard. Reason why is because each roll of coax, uh, no matter how concise and consistent the company is that makes it, um, the velocity factor te technically can go, for example, here it's 695. Um, you know, 20 years ago when they actually put the damn things on the uh, uh, side of the rolls, uh, it would actually tell you specifically, you know, what the velocity factor per roll was. You know, so whenever you buy a 500 or a 1,000 foot roll of coax, uh, it would tell you what the consistency rating was based off of your velocity factor. So, you know, in some cases it would be 696, 695, maybe even uh, 694 or 7. Uh, it would vary just very, very slightly, but they gave you that uh, little piece of info. That was something Belden did many, many years ago. Uh, I haven't seen it on a roll of coax in forever and a day. Uh, so, and unfortunately, where I bought this roll of coax at, again, I never got that information. So, uh, the 695 is what we're actually going to go off of. So, I'm going to set that off to the side. Uh, one of the other things, too since this is kind of a test, um, we'll take our dummy load. I'm actually going to find out what the uh, rating of it is, you know, since it has been so many years, and see where we're at. All right, so I've got, and hold it on there, I've got, uh, oops, I can keep it on there. All right, so I've got 50, 50.65 ohms. So let's go up here and I'll see what we're looking at. Let's see if I can get both of these in the same shot here. So we're just going to the outside edge. And we're going to go to our center. So 50.6364. Yeah, it depends on how good I can keep my uh, fingers on there. It's actually a lot harder than it looks, guys.
Ja. So. So 59. We're just going to call it, you know, we'll go ahead and call it 51. Um, since we're at 59, you know, 50.69. Okay. So that's, that's our dummy load that we're using. All right. So that's, that's our constant. All right. Hello, Mr. Rabbit, 669 from the Empire State. Good evening. So, all right. So we kind of discussed as far as our connections and, and what have you uh, and the rating. Uh, I would say if I'd clean some of the tarnish off of that, I could probably get just a little bit better, a uh, little bit better or lower uh, resistance. But uh, we're still right there in that ideal range. Uh, once you go beyond 52 ohms, that's when you need to actually look at replacing the dummy load. So... With this, I'm going to give you the formula that uh, uh, you can find on the internet all kinds of different places. Uh, here, I've got a rope down in relationship to a uh, one full wavelength, which since we're doing half of that, we're actually going to use half of the four, uh, 984, which comes up to uh, 492. So that's what we're going to use for our half wavelength. All right, so let's set this off to the side, and I've got the uh, formula actually wrote down that we're going to be using. Set that off to the side. All right, so we're going to take our 492, multiply it times our velocity factor, which was 695. So, and the frequency today that these are actually going to be cut for specifically is 27.400. Instead of 405 for channel 40, we're actually just rounding it down. Uh, to 400. So, and the reason why is uh, most of these meters, uh, that's typically what they lay, uh, lay down on is uh, typically like 400 instead of 405 that we normally would use for channel 40. But instead of doing in the center of the band, these are actually going to be made at channel 40. Um, it has to do with a particular, uh, particular test and a particular setup that I'm actually going to wind up using these in. Uh, when I've actually got these finished. So that's part of the reason why these lengths are going to be the length they are, or the reason why I'm tuning it for the specific frequency. So we're going to take our 492. Set this off to the side just enough. All right. That's why you can see all the, all the good stuff. Good evening, James. I see you're in there. All right, so we're going to start out with a 492. We're going to multiply that times 0 0.695, which gives us 341.94. So that's where we're at right now. So 391.4. And we're going to divide that by our frequency, which is 27.4. Four zero zero, which gives us twelve point four seven nine five, and we're just going to go six. Um, now let's go ahead and write it all the way out two. Okay, so that's that's the actual free, uh, excuse me length. Now this is twelve feet but it's 0.47 feet. So um, in some cases you would go ahead and round up since we're at 47, but we're going to go just a little bit further. We're going to go ahead and write down our 12 feet over here. And we're going to take this number here because that's the one that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we're going to go 0.479562. Now we're going to take that number, we're going to multiply it times 12. The reason why is because we want our measurement physically in feet. Um, so we've got 12 feet, 5 inches, and 750 would be uh, 3 quarters of an inch. It's 750 thousandths in 1 inch. Um, so 754, we're going to call this, as far as on the roundup, we're just going to call it 3 quarters of an inch. So... 
reason why is because it's going to get us it's going to get us incredibly close to the number that we're looking for. All right. So that's actually the full full size that we're looking at. We're looking for 12 foot 5 and 3 quarter inches is what we're looking at for our final, you know, for our final number. All right. So what I did was I actually measured out and we'll get to that one. We'll get to that one as soon as we go through these other other ones first. Um, I've got this one here that I've actually got cut approximately a foot long. So we're going to actually take this one uh, once we actually go through those other three and see what the differences are. We're going to take this one and tune it based off of the other three meters is what we're going to do. So let's get this up here. So you're running a five eighths wave. Okay. Um, well, I know I run a five eighths wave as far as my. Uh, uh, my base antenna, that's what it is, is this 5 8 wave. Um, but it's really unique as far as whenever you're actually putting this portion of it here to use uh, when you actually start looking at a few different things. So uh, one of the things that I have learned um, that's actually kind of important, um, and it has to do with uh, the phasing, uh, regardless of uh, whether you're using a, a quarter wave antenna, like a 108 inch whip, um, a lot of people put on 102, but whenever you add the spring, uh, which is six inches, you know, typically you have your 108 inches, uh, which is closer to what we actually need for uh, the frequency that we use here. So, all right. Well, anyways, like I said, I've got these, got these three cut. Now, one of them is not cut 100% to spec. Uh, the reason why is because whenever I sat there and was playing with this, I got down to the last one and I thought, you know, let's stop right here. I put it off to the side and figured I'd uh, come back to it this weekend. Uh, so I've got one of these three that still needs to be tuned just a little bit. And then we'll go through, we'll actually use a tape measure. We'll measure all three of them out and find out which one is closest to this number. You know, so we can get a validation based on, you know, what meter is going to give us the more, you know, the, the closer accuracy based on this. Um, you know, and it may or may not surprise any of you, may, and then again, it may. Uh, but I do know from marks that I had put on there, uh, I know approximately where it has changed as far as on the fluctuations. So. Now, that's kind of what I wanted to show because I know everybody uses all different types of meters. We've got the new rig expert that's came out uh, versus the MFJ that, you know, takes like, you know, 40 batteries, in, um, you know, versus two batteries versus, uh, you know, the uh, KC-901 that's got uh, its own built-in battery pack. And all three of them run on different voltages. Uh, so the voltages are totally different for each one of them. So, you know, again, you know, we've got different things that, you know, we'll give you different references. So uh, the first one we're going to start out with is the good old fashioned MFJ. So like I said, you know, you know, close to the 12 foot five inches or 12 foot six inches, you might as well say, um, you know, that's the reference number that we're after. So that's the one we want. Right, so I'm going to set this off to the side. We're gonna grab the good old fashioned MFJ. Now then this is a half wave. That's the reason why it's 12, you know, approximately 12 foot or what a lot of people call 12 feet. Um, you know, that's one of the you know, one of the things that we're gonna be looking at is that right there. So you know, versus a quarter wave, which is gonna be what six foot eight or something like that, almost seven foot. You know, which is your quarter wave. And one of the unique things about doing a half wavelength versus a quarter wavelength is this right here. 
you have to have a small dummy load in order to go ahead and create the uh, approximately, you know, approximate that it's looking for. Um, basically what it amounts to is it sees this and then it sees the coax and essentially is able to go ahead and give you the difference uh, based off of, if you will, a full wavelength essentially is what this meter is looking for at this point. So we've got half of it here and then the other half uh, we're making up based off of the coax. So we're going to grab this one here that we've got marked with a piece of tape. It says MFJ on it. Ta -da. And we're going to plug this in. Block here so we get some of the uh, some of the glare off of it. We'll turn it on, and we need to find the other end. So your 98 bhp just tunes flat that's definitely good okay three if you try it without the dummy load you can do that however it will only work if you're doing a quarter wavelength and i've actually got a quarter wavelength coax and i'll, I'll show you the difference when we get to the end of this so because believe it or not, you cannot get a halfway a half wavelength on a uh, uh, without using a dummy load. It, it's actually impossible. I get three meters here that have told me the same thing. Um, so, and if you go through like the ARRL handbook, um, uh, there's actually a small little uh, snippet in there. Uh, that uh, goes back to using uh, your dummy load uh, as far as for tuning, you know, longer lengths other than a quarter wavelength. So that's the reason why this is actually kind of important. Um, now you can actually go back and tune it again. You can tune a very long piece. However, it will fall specifically on a full wavelength. Uh, for example, if you're doing, let's say, a 50-foot jumper, um, if you don't use a dummy load, you can actually go ahead and get it to fall into resonance without it. However, it will fall on a full wavelength um, once you go beyond, you know, beyond a certain length. So the uh, dummy load is your best friend. So, all right, so let's turn that back on. Grab my snippets. So. Go ahead and move that up just a little bit. So we should be on 27 channel 40, which is what we're after. Yes. Um, I don't know if you're the gentleman that uh, called me here a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, that we talked about that or not, but uh, yes. So right now I've got an X factor and that's what we're, this is the only thing we're actually concerned about at this time is just the X factor. Uh, so right now, hopefully you guys can see that. It looks good in the uh, meter or in the camera. Uh, so we've got, uh, you know, factor of two. So I'm just gonna cut a quarter inch off at a time. So we're already fluctuating. Down to a one. Still there. Eighth inch. Get all the way cut off.
Okay, now we're starting to see it wiggle. Okay, so I'm going to cut just another small fraction. Meter is actually floating, so let's go bump this back up a little bit. Let's check something here. Turn the meter back off and then turn it back on because I know that these things time out on you. So that's the reason why we're going to do that. All right. So I'm going to stop right where we're at. And the reason why is because I can go from Channel 50, 52, we're showing an X factor of one. Down to roughly 26, eight, six, and we're still there. So we're gonna call this one good. Not every coax is gonna be exactly what you want. You know, as far as to see that zero. But I do know that we're at the point where if we start cutting any more, or it's fluctuating, we're actually going to start going the other direction. All right. So that's where we're at on this one. Set that meter off to the side and undo our T. Set that one over there. And this one says rig expert. So that's what we're going to do next. I've had a few people stop by here uh, recently. Of course, that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm almost 45 minutes later than I had anticipated uh, as far as I'm doing this particular video. But I wanted to go ahead and finish up the one little amplifier that I had on the workbench at the time. So I actually had to go back. This is actually part of it right here as far as on tuning. Um, I had to actually go back and rewind the input. And it needed one more wrap in order for the... Uh, uh, input to lay down like it needed to be. So uh, anyways, let's go back here. The rig expert. Oops, if you turn it on. All right. Now we've got all parameters selected. I'm going to hit OK. Our principal fre frequency that we're at is 27405. Hopefully you guys can see that. You know, sometimes glares, you know, the glares kind of get bad in here. Um, I actually bought some diffusers for my lights to essentially try to help that. So we went ahead and, and hit OK. And this is actually going through and checking all parameters. So this one is another one that I want to look at here because I've got a Z factor right now of 48. Um, you know, 
Let's check that out here. Let's run our frequency down. Let's see what's going on. Or excuse me, our X factor. I was looking at the Z, not the X. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, X factor right now, we're at 0 0.47, 0 0.1. Okay, so roughly about 32. So this one's going to need to probably be snipped just a little bit. All right, so we've got an X factor of negative 0.3. So a negative number. So a negative number is going to do the same thing as a positive number uh, in retrospect to this. Um, you know, what it is, we're trying to get back to zero. So let's go ahead and see. Since we're 0.3538-ish, let's cut about an eighth of an inch off. That takes us to 0.2. 0 0.08. The screen will stay light. So 0 0.058 ish. So let's take one more snippet. All right. So at that point, we can pretty well call it, uh, since we're floating down at 0 0.0106, now let's cut another 16th. Okay, so that little 16th actually jumped us up just a little bit more. Okay, so with that little 16th of an inch, that actually changes, changed the coax by essentially two essentially uh, two channels as far as that goes. So that was one of the other things that like I said I wanted to kind of show you guys. Um, it's not enough to it's not enough to affect anything as far as that goes. But now we've got this one done. So let's go ahead and shut this one off. Come back and revisit it. Hey, good evening, Tracy. All right. And we're going to go ahead and get our analyzer here. Hello, popcorn. This one I already had pre-cut. Like I said, the other two were incredibly close, so to being zeroed out. I'm not sure who won Fat Cat's amp. I have no idea, buddy. Okay, so the only thing that I really wished, and it's just this thing is packed, packed, packed with other information. Um, but one of the other nice things too, which there again, I mean, you can pull up a Smith chart also with this, as well as the uh, rig expert, uh, which is kind of nice, um, you know, versus the MFJ. But now one of the other things that this is really, really nice about is the fact that you can go actually through here 
and you can actually see the different coefficients that it's going to give you as far as for references and your numbers. So on uh, channel 40, which is 274025, uh, okay, that's going to be our green index point, which is right here. So, you know, oops. Okay, so that's 25. Let's go over here. All right, so we can see that we're moving. So I'm going to put it back up here on channel 40. 38, 39, and 40. All right, so I've got this set for 5, uh, five megahertz bandwidth. So that's what we're looking at essentially across the screen is a 5 megahertz span. Uh, it just gives us a little more detailed information in regards to that. Um, we're not going to be transmitting outside of a 5 megahertz band with these uh, with these particular jumpers anyways. So it's not going to be a major, uh, major determining factor. All right, so if we go over here, based on where our index is here, we've got a current resistance showing uh, 40, uh, 45.9. Uh, which this at this point's not really, uh, you know, anything major that we're after. Um, you know, as far as on that, you know, Z is essentially the same. Uh, then you go over here to the X factor, which is what we're after. And this one is at 0 .00, uh, it goes as low as 0 .001. Um, so that's where we're at essentially on our numbers. So we've got all three coaxes tuned based off of what we've got. So uh, what we have in order to go ahead and take that information that we've got um, to validate which one is the most accurate between the three. Set that back off to the side. And it's, crude, it's a crude method. But now what we have to do Let's take out this and measure each one of these coaxes that are laying here between the three of them. So very, very important. Now, when taking these measurements, and this was something that uh, I have went round and round over the last 30 years um, until I was shown many years ago, how to use the MFJ to tune a quarter wavelength uh, coax, I did not realize uh, how important, you know, how important some of the different attributes are. Uh, so anyways, let's go through here. Oh, um, yeah. Anyways, so what we're going to do, that's, re that's where I was going to go out with that, is we're actually going to measure from tip to tip. Uh, the reason why is... Uh, Believe it or not, the electrical wavelength is based off of your tip, so your center, your center conductor. That's what everything is based off of. Uh, the third meter, uh, which should have been the network analyzer that I'm using right here. If this is the one that you're referring to, James, uh, this is actually the... Uh, I believe they pronounce it Vena. It's a KC901S plus uh, net, network analyzer. Um, out of the three, this is going to cost you the most. So <laughs> uh, be prepared when you go to look for that one. All right, so where is my pen? There it is. So let's write down our lengths based off of that. So we've got our KC901 for short. Oops. Dyslexia, guys. Rig expert. And then the famous MFJ. So, 
Let's get this measured out and find out which one is closest to our number. Now, because of the fact that I know it's over, it's roughly 12 feet and I'm going to run out of tape uh, before we wind up at the end of this. So, I'll try to get that as close to tip as we can. Give it a little pinch. So where I'm going to stop this at is 10 foot. I'm going to make a little mark and then we're going to finish measuring it out from that point forward. Okay, there's a 10 foot. As you can see the little dot right there. <laughs> you do it too. All right. All right. So there's 11 feet. All right. So now again, like I said, we have to go off the mathematical formula. So that's all we have to go with. So at that point, since we're 10, there's our 12. So we're at 12, 12 and a half, or 12 feet, one half inch is what we come up with. So 12 foot and one. Ah, well, thankfully. That's another reason why it's nice to do that. That way we don't have to remeasure the whole thing. So I think it was just 12 feet and one half inch. Yes, 12 feet and one half inch. All right. So let's get this baby wrapped up. And again, our coaxes are also going to change as far as that goes. But uh, one of the things that I noticed, though, um, is the linearity on that uh, on, on the KC901. You've got uh, a huge range, and this one I actually I've actually cut it just a little shorter, I think. Um, and the reason why is I wanted to try I wanted to try something uh, as far as versus you know our positive and negative numbers. So let's go back to the one that's marked here for the rig expert. That's MFJ. So rig expert. And most of these, most of these meters, um, from what I could find on the internet, um, most of these, they've got them rated essentially in DBM, uh, but for all intents and purposes, most of these, uh, from what I could find as far as basic information, um, all three meters are essentially supposed to be within 5% of uh, their accuracy. So, you know, overall, they're, they're essentially the same. Eight, nine, ten, which I've actually got a red mark on that one. Just go ahead and go back with a yellow. I use the same tape measure whenever I cut these, too, by the way. 
All right. There's our two foot. So 12, 12 feet, four, uh, yeah, 12 feet, four and one sixteenth inches. Twelve foot, four and one sixteenth. Based off of our number here, the rig expert's looking pretty damn good. But like I said, I'll, I'll, I've actually got two more coaxes, one of which I'll cut using this, and I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you the reason why here in a minute. So we've got that one, we've got that one, and this is our MF, yeah, our MFJ. So this is the one that everybody's used for the most part forever and a day. Just trying to make sure that I get this started right. Okay. This is a little more difficult than doing it out in the main floor, especially doing it here on the bench. And there's our 10 foot mark. Two foot four and one half. So two foot four and one half. First, yeah, so it's going to give us our total of 12 foot four, 12 feet four and one half inches. Okay. These two are looking really close. Now, part of the reason why I said what I did is, like I said, I made out another coax, all right? And part of it has to do with the graft and what I was looking for, as far as when I was using this. So let's get this in here, flipped over.
And I've got a mark on there where I think that's supposed to be the right uh, right length overall. Okay, so we are running. Here, where you guys can see the uh, get that glare off the screen. Okay, so that's what our numbers are. So, what we're interested in right here is our X factor. Uh, currently, we're setting at a negative. Uh, 8.4. Okay, so 7. And right now, because where I've at least got a mark, I've got an idea. So we're down to 6, 5, 4, Two. Don't know where that piece went. One. Zero point eight point seven six. Three, two, point one, point six, point two, point zero nine. Point zero four. I'll take about a thirty second more off of that. If I can trim that much. Okay. Point zero, and it's fluctuating back and forth. So right there, we've actually hit our zero reference. Is what we're after. Yeah, blast off. <laughs> yeah, that's what the one said. Yep, like I said, I don't know where in the world that piece went. I'm sure you guys heard it hit hit the wall over there, but I do not. Oh, there it is, way back over there in the corner, which is you know several pieces ago where I cut an inch off of it. Okay, so let's undo this. Now we'll see what kind of a mark we've got here. And then we're going to go back and look at 
talk about some of the different numbers. But for those of you that have multiple different, uh, you know, multiple different meters, you know, it's kind of a neat little test. Uh, kind of give you a little more reference as far as, uh, you know, the warm and fuzzy feeling that knowing that the measurements and stuff that you've always got. And that was always my big thing as well. You know, how accurate is it? Is it close? Is, am I in the ballpark? Is it the same? You know, where am I at? Okay, and I came up with two foot and a sixteenth. Okay, so twelve feet. Oh, oops, and a sixteenth. Now, one of the reasons that you're going to see that kind of difference has to do with the way that meter actually reads. But it also gives you validation that the other two are still correct. You know, again, you've got three different meters. Technically, we've got three different readings, not by much as far as here. Uh, you know, your big number difference is going to be with the 901. However, when you go, you know, and this is the reason why, even if you don't have a meter, um, if you go to the formula that uh, they've got, it's going to get you in the ballpark, you know, based on, you know, what frequency that you're actually using. So. Now you also have to remember the MFJ. Um, had I cut a little bit more off of it to try to get it down any more, it would have went ahead and went over the, you know, over the limit, which is very easily done. But when you go through here, okay, according to this, you know, I've got 0 0.001 on the X factor. Okay. Now you can actually look across the span you know, right now I've got from this arrow here to here, you know, we're only looking at a couple of megahertz, you know, from 25 to 27, you know, 27 being principal frequency that we're looking at as far as 27, 40, uh, 402. Um, you know, so looking at that, what you're actually going to be able to see is how far a span you've got based off of uh, your phase angle. So that's something that, uh, you know, you can go into another screen and we can actually see that as well. Um, let's see here, mode. Do, 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 do. Smith chart, that's what I was looking for. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and run that. All right, so using the Smith chart, what we are seeing, the green arrow is on our most linear portion of this. 
So 27, 402. Okay, our phase angle is actually showing us 179.6. Now you ask what that what that's about. Well, the phase angle actually is the point at which the frequency actually starts to fold back over. Um, so that's actually kind of important. When you're looking at different angles and different uh, attributes, and now that's the other thing too that we're gonna go over to next um, and check because of the fact that there's only two of these three meters that will actually show you what you're looking for. You know, this one does give you a Smith chart and it does give you a lot of other information that the other two don't have. Um, the reg expert again is going to show you information that you won't get with the MFJ. Uh, the MFJ is probably based off of the fact that it's just been around so long and so many people know how to use it. Um, you know, the MFJ actually does help immensely in regards to that. So let's get that there. Where's the other one from the MFJ? Is that it? It's the rig expert. Actually, that's the Y1 is the one for the rig expert. Okay, keep forgetting that you got to turn it on here. All right, so we're going to go here to all parameters. We're going to look at one thing there. Then we're actually going to go into the Smith chart as well. So go into all parameters again based off of this one. And you're going to see that the phase angle is a little different. The other one is actually specifically on, if you will, 180 because it's 179 point whatever that was. Um, and staying stable. So, you know, you've got a semi non stable reading here on your phase angle, but we're ranging between 77 to 78 as far as on our phase. So we're not exactly 100% on the mark. All right, so let's go here. Uh, Smith chart. Hit OK. Run. Okay. Now, one of the things that you're going to see, we're just above our zero reference uh, looking at that. You know, they're giving us here, um, you know, plus or minus 500 kilohertz as far as on the other span. So not a lot of, uh, not a lot of adjustment as far as on uh, looking at it on the uh, Smith chart like you would if you actually hook it up to a physical antenna. A physical antenna is going to show you a little bit different uh, different thing. So we'll run that again, as you're going to see. So again, you know, both of them are going to give you nearly the same, you know, same information and some of the same attributes. Oh, 42. Okay. So... There. Thank you, three. I thought I had already put it back. All right. Again, just fractions. You know, so now we're looking at uh, staying on the same frequency. You know, it's staying within, you know, 250 kilohertz, not megahertz, but kilohertz uh, as far as on your span. So again, you know, nice, good, even reading. All right, cancel. Now, one of the unique things, Smith, let's see, SWR. Yep. Okay. Now, this is something that's also kind of neat. Uh, when you're actually doing one of these, believe it or not, uh, you can actually use something as simple as uh, an SWR meter, and it's going to get you somewhat in the ballpark, provided that you're using a, a dummy load. So you know, with a small amount of input power, uh, even if you don't have one of these meters, you can actually use uh, essentially a small SWR meter 
and some kind of a walkie talkie or something just to inject uh, at least a half a watt signal going into the uh, coax and you can actually tune the same same way by looking at your number here and trimming it down to your lowest SWR. So now this is kind of neat because it also gives us, you know, uh, our return loss based off of the approximately 12 foot length. You know, you're looking at about 37 to 38 dB. So, you know, again, a little more information, you know, that's available through this. Um, it's just not quite as easy to use because of all it, it's got a lot more features than the MFJ. But the MFJ is going to show you a lot of different things, um, you know, just because there's so many people that are used to using it. So, all righty. Well, hopefully, yep, so hopefully, you know, it kind of gives you guys a little bit more information because there again, uh, I've had people ask about all different things. And again, you know, you've got different meters that are going to show different readings. Uh, some of them are going to show the same. When you go into the network analyzer, um, again, you know, there is almost four inches difference in the coax, uh, you know, approximately. And that, ha you know, and there's a lot to, uh, you know, a lot to be said about that too. Uh, format. Oops. Say return loss, which we can get that as well. If I hook that back up, we can go through here and we can calculate and it'll show us essentially our return loss based off of, you know, what we set their center frequency at. So mode, let's go back here. Do, 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 do. Format. Yeah. yeah. Is that what I wanted? No. Yeah. It shows our ZY axis, which I don't have anything hooked to, but I was looking for the specific chart here. Now, the other thing, too, is this actually does a system calibrate. So this actually calibrates its system every time you turn it back on. That's one of the other neat things about this as well. Uh, phasing, you know, again, if we wanted to go back and look at uh, the phasing and kicks and grins. Let's hook up our dummy load. And I just randomly grabbed one. This one says rig expert. All right. Do, 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 do. Mode. Format. Return loss. All right, so our return loss, and that's one of the things, like, so this is just off of a different, you know, this is the different one. This is off the rig expert. Um, you know, so the return loss here uh, at the 27,402 approximately. So we're looking at, uh, you know, here it's giving us a 35, you know, 35.4 dBm, uh, which is actually really good as far as based off the coax itself. Um uh, let's see here. Yep, SWR. Do, 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 do. All right. So one point zero three. So that's what we're showing on the uh, reg experts. So. Essentially, that just validates the uh, cable, essentially. So we've got two numbers that are showing identical, even though we've got two different coaxes that are cut to two different lengths on the same frequency. So, again, 
you know, it's essentially just another way to kind of cross reference, you know, cross reference your material. Um, like I said, there's just different things that you can do with one of these that you can't do with either the other and vice versa. Um, of course, this does more than I think, <laughs> uh, than what it doesn't do. So, uh, format, uh, let's see, let's go over here to impedance. Since that's what we were setting basically everything up to. And now you're going to see here on the same frequency, you know, you're going to show an X factor of 1.6. So again, you know, you've got to look at, uh, you know, what meters you're using. You know, essentially what I'm trying to get at across the board is not every meter is going to be exactly the same. Uh, however, there are going to be different attributes that depending on how it reads, it's going to give you the same, same information and it's going to give you different, uh, you know, different layouts based on where you're going to go. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Smith chart. Let's look at this one on the Smith chart. Uh, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still learning this, so. Recall. Exit. Yeah, this thing's got so many doggone things, it's sometimes hard to remember. Okay. That's what I was trying to find. All right. So, run that. Okay, so this one here is kind of neat because of the fact that if we go over here to center, it's showing a center of 26102 versus our principal frequency. So span. Tells us nano Henry's on the coax. Let's do a 15 megahertz band. Okay, 100. Oh, we can see where it actually overlaps again, where we're at. So. Like I said, just between the three of them, like I said, we've got a lot of inf different information, you know, that we can actually go back and forth to validate uh, whatever we're thinking or whatever we see. So, all righty. Well, hopefully that has helped a few different people. Um, one of the other things, too, speaking of which, let's grab... One more piece of coax because of what uh, Early was talking about. This is actually one, hopefully, you can tell by the length. You know, it's much shorter. You know, this is actually one that I cut for a quarter wavelength. So we're going to measure this one out here real quick, too. And I don't remember which meter that I actually used for this. Five, we're at six. Okay, so 
six foot five and three quarter. And this is something three was talking about. So grab this one, all perimeters. Okay, so currently we're set at all parameters. Now we've got an X factor of four, but now I know that this, this particular jumper is tuned at a different frequency. Yeah, 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 I pushed the wrong button. All right. Okay, so... Now here we've got an X factor of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's find out where the resonance is on this one. Okay, so that one's showing 25.9 um, as far as for our reactants. Now since we were up there around channel 20, okay, we're at three. Five, seven, eight, ten, thirteen, thirteen. Essentially, we're going to find out how far up it has to go in order to go ahead and drop back to your uh, resonant point. if it'll even go that high. Which unless you get up into the really expensive MFJ or rig expert, um, you know, this is where it kind of gets a little tricky. Because I can tell you right now that this is going to keep going until we get up to... Uh, 160 or 180 ohms essentially before it actually comes back down. So, uh, da, 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 frequency range. Yep. So, let's put that back. All right. Good old MFJ. All right, so for this one to actually hit what we're looking for as far as an X factor of zero, um, you know, we're down to 2630, which means that it's way too long uh, based on this. So. Let's set that off to the side. So like I said, I don't remember which meter that I had set this through. This is just one of the random ones that I've made here some time ago. Okay. Mode setting. Okay. Now, part of the reason why you're seeing that is because it's different, different numbers that it's wound up on. 
uh, because of where I had punched in some of the wrong buttons a while ago. So let's go back here. We're already set to span. Let's go ahead and put that at 27. Actually, I want to change that. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's the span. Duh. Okay. Spanned. Uh, let's set that for a span of uh, 10. Center frequency. Okay. No, oh, no wonder. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we need 2.7 gigahertz. There. That's a little bit better. 27.2 for our center. All right. So switch over here to our green little arrow. Okay. So center. Move that over here. Okay, so that's 22 all the way down. All right, so 30 megahertz is where we're at here with green or with the red arrow with green area. Green arrow, we're on our zero frequency here. So, again, you know, you can go through here and look, you know, where you've got an X factor here of 28. So, I don't remember what I've got this one actually cut for. Um, you know, but we could also go back and do our mathematical chart and figure out and know that we would be somewhere in the ballpark. Um, like I said, I don't remember what I had cut this jumper for because I specifically marked it. So unfortunately I didn't mark it with the frequency. Uh, so this may have been one that I'd cut for something else. So I'm going to have to figure it out before I start using this for anything else. But, you know, again, we could actually go back and figure out exactly what frequency that this is resonant at, you know, based on the length or calculations and get somewhat in the ballpark. So, well, like I said, I'm glad you guys did learn a little something. Um, you know, like I said, you know, the big thing is, is like I said, all these meters have got a lot of information that you can, that you can get from them. Um, my major thing that I would suggest out of everything, you know, find one, maybe two meters and stick with them. Uh, you know, based on what your needs are in your application. So, again, you know, hopefully it's some good information. Like I said, just to figure out what's what and what does, you know, what does uh, actually matter. So, but again, like I said, you've got different frequencies. You've got different lengths. You know, all of them. Uh, have got different reference numbers based off of, you know, how they're, you know, how they're created. Um, again, as far as for reference, you know, we've got our 12 foot, five and three quarter inches. None of these actually hit on those, on those marks. Uh, essentially, we're looking at, you know, as much as four inches, you know, four inches of coax, which really isn't that long when you stop and think about it. You know. That's four inches. So depending on, like I said, depending on what it is, the type of coax, 
your connectors, you know, all these different things do take a different, uh, different uh, format. So, you know, one of the things that I think that is really nice though about the MFJ, even though a lot of people uh, kind of frown on these uh, because of the fact that there's so other, you know, so many different things. What I like about these is the fact that they do still have analog meters. Um, in this particular application, it's not going to really help as much, but you've got, you know, your analog meters and this, and it's so much easier to actually watch a physical analog meter to see what's going on and then come back and take your information uh, from your LCD screen. Uh, same thing with the rig expert. The other one, like I said, will do a ton of different things um, based on what you're looking for. Well, hello, Charles. What's going on, buddy? But, uh, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of good information. You know, like I said, um, the only one that I was actually surprised on as far as that uh, this evening was actually the uh, 901. Um, just because of the fact that with what I've used as far as using it for tuning different circuits and what have you, um, it has actually, everything's fell better into resonance um, using the analyzer versus any of the other three uh, trying to use them on the same application. So, you know, the, uh, you know, the markers as far as on the coax, uh, that was actually kind of a stunning, you know, stunning uh, change that uh, I was kind of surprised on. Now, the only other validation that we can take and check these numbers with essentially would be like the input side of an amplifier. Um, you know, preferably one that's got uh, at least one, an average of at least one watt of uh, reflect coming back. Um, you know, you can use it on the other side, but it's a little harder. Uh, if you use it between the radio and essentially an amplifier that's going to have some SWR, uh, like I said, it doesn't need much. You just need a little something. You know, at that point, then we could go back and look at the validations between these three here and see which ones or what the true difference is. Uh, that's something that I'll probably do eventually and shoot another video as far as on that based on, based on these. But that's what these coaxes are here for, you know, is a learning tool, you know, to show some of the differences and, you know, also to be able to help uh, people differentiate that's looking to spend money on a new meter or a meter in general. You know, that's going to get you, you know, that's going to get you in the ballpark to do some of the different, uh, you know, some of the different attributes. Um, speaking of which. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I was actually surprised on that one. Um, I actually expected the rig expert to come in, uh, come in slightly better. Um, you know, the MFJ was definitely better in relationship to the half wavelength. Um, you know, another one that I could have done as well, it's just I don't need any right at the moment, uh, which is doing it based off of a quarter wavelength. Um, but now this is something else too. Oh, yeah. Is with the MFJ. Uh, one of the things that they've also got going for, for them, it's kind of difficult and this goes into a whole different uh, attribute that uh, we're not going to get into today. Uh, but you've got these different adapto pieces that you see that I've pulled out. Uh, and what these essentially are for is for, turn, uh, for using it as a grid dip meter. Um, you know, I have never been a, a big one to use the MFJ for that. I've actually got... Uh, uh, what they call grid dip, a uh, grid dip meter. So, and I don't know how, but theoretically there is actually a way to uh, go back and propagate your coaxes. It's something I've never learned. Uh, but essentially, if you're tuning coaxes, like I said, I've never figured out how to do it. Uh, I haven't looked into it that much. I'll grab it here. Come on, get out of there. 
Come on. All right. I've actually got two of these. Um, this is the newest, you know, the newest, latest, and greatest that I've got. Um, let's go over here and check. Yeah, battery's still good. I haven't used this in forever. Um, does have a little phone head jack for it. Now, theoretically, there is a way. <laughs> This one. Essentially, if you go ahead and plug in one of your coils that's made for this, I see that one's green. Uh, 47 megs. Okay. So that's E. All right. Well, it's not for the uh, frequency that we're dealing with today, but uh, essentially. Well, it's tight. There you go. Snaps in. All right. But essentially, you're going to use your grid dip meter, essentially the same in the same format. Like I said, I have been told by some of the old, old, incredibly older guys, uh, you know, that uh, they can actually use one of these and tune a piece of coax. I have never seen it done. Uh, so that's something that I could not help somebody with. Uh, typically, this is used more in the old tube type amplifiers. Uh, you know, your old sweep tubes, things like that. And these work. Uh, like I said, it's very rudimentary. Uh, unlike any of the other analyzers that I've got on the workbench, you know, by moving your dial, um, it's going to get you within a megahertz essentially um, and at that point you know you just gotta play with the circuit at that point uh, to get it all to fall in but you know still they're nice to have I've got this one and I've got a tube type version that's uh, very old and very ancient both of them work really good but like I said this is not something we're going to get into as far as on the classification or a class with because uh, it goes into a whole different realm. So anyhow, like I said, hopefully, you know, we've given you guys some different information uh, and some validation as far as on uh, meters as well as, you know, some of the different information. Um, you know, the 901, what I like about it, uh, regardless of the fact that it doesn't show exactly the same as what these are. Uh, one of the things that I like about that is you can actually see uh, if you actually go back, which I can hook one back up if somebody would like and see the difference. Because if you, if you go ahead and use this, what I've noticed as far as on the span, if you go from uh, channel one through channel 40 or, or vice versa, uh, you're actually going to see that it stays more stable uh, from one side of the uh, band to the other end, you know, as far as within the, uh, you know, 40 to, you know, 40 to 80 channel frequency range. That's one of the biggest things that I've seen that's the most impressive versus like the MFJ or the Reg Expert, which whenever you tune it for that specific frequency that they've got, um, you know, and that's the other thing too, you have to remember, these are tuning for an exact frequency. Uh, the analyzer, you know, is doing the same thing. However, by going through and, and looking, once you've hit, you know, once you hit that uh, certain number, you're actually going to see a larger span width. And that's what you're actually seeing with the uh, line, line across the graph, is you're actually seeing, you know, the span in which it's going to stay the most stable. Um, so that's one of the other unique things. Uh, like I said, we'll get into that a little bit more at a later date. But uh, hopefully, like I said, you guys enjoyed that. I've got uh, another one coming up uh, as soon as I take a short break and get my bench cleaned off. Uh, I'll be uh, working on a base this evening. If you guys would like to see another live video or something, uh, just hit me up and, and uh, may go ahead and go live yet and, again this evening. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the info. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Have a great evening, guys. Bye-bye.